Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Halo Cannon. Today, we're going to be doing a pre-E3 discussion. And joining me today are some very special guests. First up, Drew Freeman from Podcast Evolved. Hi, pipe, 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 pipe. Evolved. <laughs> Next, we have a couple people from uh, the Halo Archive. First up, Harispis, who also runs a blog. Say hello. I'm... I'm very happy that you said I was a special person. I'm, I, I like that. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. And if, he, if it wasn't clear, he's got the greatest voice of all time. And, <laughs> yeah, last, but certainly not, <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Logan. Go ahead and uh, introduce him. What do you do on the, on the Archive? Um, just like Charispus, I'm a juridical on the Archive, so I ban all the scrubs. But I also <laughs> ban scrubs on Halopedia, where I'm an admin. So don't... Wait. Don't if, make stupid edit wars there. We admire your wonderful work. If you, if you ban Scrubs, how am I still active on both those sites? <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. You, you Fix that a, after this get call. You a soft spot for, uh, for Scrubs that are useful. There you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So that's everyone. Um, there will be links in the description to Podcast Evolved and the Horospice blog and, of course, Halo Archive. Check them all out. They will all be worth your time, especially if you love the lore. And... Uh, Yeah, so like I said, we're going to be doing a pre-E3 discussion. Um, Our basic agenda here today, we're going to start off talking about Halo Wars 2, which is definitely going to be the highlight of the show, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Mm -hmm. Talk about possible future Halo 5 content, uh, the next game in the Reclaimer Saga, Halo 6, or whatever they may call it, potential spin-off titles such as ODST, the Spartan Mobile Games, whatever, what have you. And we'll close that with uh, some other special uh, discussions, notably the Halo TV show, and where if we think it'll be there, if it'll be discussed at all. I'm still banking on no, but we'll see. <laughs> if you want to, skip <laughs> it was to supposed a, to come out full 2015, is and I even remember. earlier before that, yeah, it was like once like 2014, then 2015. That's the thing; it's, yeah. it's coming out backwards in time rather yeah, than forwards in time. <laughs> yeah, it's so still it's coming out fall 2015. So. You just need to get a TARDIS in order to see it. <laughs> but uh, if anyone wants to skip to a particular subject, there will be annotations on the screen and uh, times to skip to in the description box. So you can skip if you don't want to hear the whole thing. You can skip to a specific subject, or if you get tired of one subject, you can skip to another. Just watch the first thirty seconds so I get my. Just watch the first thirty seconds so I get my monetization. That's all I ask. Yeah, so I'm pretty I sure we're at by now. If you don't watch the whole video, <laughs> our feelings will be very hurt. <laughs> Their feelings will. I don't really care all that much. I thought we were keeping <laughs> selling out in the subtext. Oh, okay, <laughs> never mind. So, we'll get this started. First up is, of course, Halo Wars 2. We know this is going to... Well, we're pretty sure this is going to be there. I would be surprised if it wasn't. (laughs) It's playable. We know it's playable. Oh, yeah. It's playable on the E3 show show floor. They won't show the game. I'll just make it playable and just expect people to come to it. Yeah. Right, right, right. So... We'll, de- we'll, we'll definitely get some details. I expect, you know, some gameplay in a cinematic trailer of some kind. And, of course, we had that that image that was recently leaked, which may or may not be fake, but a lot of people th- seem to think is probably going to be real. I've, he- I've heard the source that it came from has made good on leaks before, so what do you guys think? I what's think it's the, real. Uh, what's the implication <laughs> of the image to kind of, like, break it down real quick? I wanted... Yeah. I added your... Uh, breakdown video into my like watch later of youtube and i didn't get to catch up to it before this morning so what is the general takeaway of that leaked so, image quote unquote it kind lesser of goes arc. a lot of ways. yeah there's the lesser arc is in the background um we have a lot of brutes and like very brute specific uh looking machines like there's locusts in there that are that look like they've been brutalized for lack of a better word <laughs> <laughs> i i love and, that word yeah. and if if halo doesn't use that word then they're doing it wrong yeah. so <laughs> it's like it's really kind of torn like some people are saying oh this proves that it's going to be pre you know it's going to be uh during the covenant war others are saying no this proves that it's post halo 5 because well, i thought it, we got confirmation that it takes place post halo 5 or yeah because of the halo wireframe 5? model of a spartan 4 that was re- revealed oh, no, 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 i just i, I thought never it was saw like that. I thought it was just something that somebody said. No, we've got the wireframe, um, the picture that he's talking about. It's on the um, Halopedia article for Halo Wars 2. If you want to bring that up real fast and look at it, like it's like a Spartan 4 wearing recruit armor, fighting... Moa heard or says it's like Healy. At first, I thought it was a Gyro Hane in power armor. I can't mm. really tell anymore, but it's no, definitely a Spartan either. 4 in recruit armor. Huh, well, uh, I, I think that um, I'm, what I'm hoping for oh, here yeah. with Halo, with Halo Wars 2... Yeah. Halo. Yeah, that's definitely a Spartan 4. Though they could also be... Because you'd for... think the logic there would be, um, if it were 
you know, not post-war, they would just do a wireframe model of a Spartan 2 because the main characters are going to be Alice, Jerome, Douglas. But yeah. the fact they've actually gone with a recruit Spartan 4 seems quite yeah. telling to me. It, it is, I will say, it's potentially just a, it's a potential stand-in model, but you never know. It's I, I'm, I don't want to say one way or another. But you got to think about it's a it's an RTS. So who are your commanders? Because your Spartans aren't going to be your commanders. So you know what are the assets that you're going to use to build up and attack and stuff like that. So Spartan fours fit perfectly as far as you know, like a great group of units to send out there, as opposed to the what were they Spartan twos back in Halo Wars time. Yeah. And so if this takes place in modern day or even closer to modern day. Which I, I think it would make sense for it to do that. I don't think they're going to be making jumps backward in time right now because they're yeah. trying to get kind of a new generation of gamers into Halo. And I think throwing it back to pre, like during the Human Covenant War and stuff, would just kind of confuse new gamers in a in a not good way. We like being yeah. confused. We like to look yeah. at it and go like, "Ooh, what's that? <laughs> I want to find out what this is all about." But I don't think you know they need Halo Wars Two to be a big smash hit for both the Xbox and Windows. So I think having Spartan 4s and having it being modern makes sense. The yeah. thing that I want to know is, what's the twist? Like, that's what's got me more excited about Halo Wars is, you know, in the original Halo Wars, the time frame of it all, uh, we just kind of knew what was going to happen. It was going to be the initial contact with the, with the Covenant and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the Flood shows up and we're like, well, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Oh god, and I remember the, the way they I remember that. that being revealed in the Vidoc and I was just like, wait, what the flood? And, Explain. And <laughs> cannon breaking. But what's your but what's your twist here, right? And yeah. so, you know, maybe uh That'd you know, throwing the in the again. forerunner <laughs> as a faction or throwing in precursors go. as a faction or something. <laughs> <Free curses. laughs> okay. <laughs> Would be yeah, all of a sudden halfway through the game reality out, starts okay. bending and breaking. Well, and then the, the, the really obvious, like, this would be a great twist and they better include it, is having Cortana as a as a general and having her created as a faction. That would be yeah. fantastic. There have been yeah. ideas thrown around that the these, like, brutish weapon, these brutish vehicles, like this brute scarab and brute locust, um, maybe have been given to these Dural Hanai by the created, which, yeah. They use a yellow really plasma, not. which kind of looks forerunner in and of itself. I honestly hope not. I honestly think that uh, it would be so much better if they focused on the Dural Hanai um, you know, as an independent faction. Yeah. yeah. But then, at the same time, saying that, I have a certain level of bias because I have no desire to hear the noun, the created, ever again, personally. <laughs> uh, I can't exactly blame that's you. Be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully for not too long. Not for too long. Yeah. Maybe one more game, we'll get through it, and then they can, you know, get on with the better story. They'll draw them Dharma the created in the next game, and we can move on to, you know, the real <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I think the biggest issue, uh, potentially, with this story is that they just make it a uh, run-of-the-mill, we've got to stop the Halos from firing again, because we've done that. We've done yeah. that twice, in fact. We did that last year in Hunter's in the dark yeah that was a you know good story uh we had it with halo 3 and i think if we did it again it would just undermine the scale of uh halo 3 as a story yeah i think so to play devil's advocate though halo 5 had the least amount of quote-unquote halo in it (laughs) so we haven't really had a halo situation in these (laughs) exactly that's why it seems likely that they might do that and i you know i I don't want them to uh, focus more on the disintegration of the Covenant by showing it from uh, the Jiral Harnai side and moving the setting forward. I think that would be the, uh, an ideal way I'd do it. Yeah. I mean, if it is post-war, there's a lot of great potential for you know bringing the San Shayun back to, as we know Absolutely. that they, they, they had led the, the Brutes for some time. Um, we could potentially, if, if it is on the arc and it is post-war, they have th- this has to be the instance where they bring back mendicant bias. They oh cannot go. They cannot bring us to an arc <laughs> for the third freaking time and not have mendicant bias. I forgave it in Hunters in the Dark because everything else going on was still interesting. But yeah. I cannot. It's imagine been nine back. goddamn years. At yes, this point. <laughs> he needs to be at, come back. He was going. Me- I can't imagine he was exactly happy for the first hundred thousand years. So it's like, wait a minute, they've been back here twice. Why aren't they helping me? Well, what was the, <laughs> the last? The last sight of him was in Escalation, wasn't it? 
No, that was, was that, uh, uh, Oh, you mean that contained Halo 2 Anniversary end? Terminals is where he Yeah, it was Halo 2 Anniversary Terminals. It was the theory that the contender of the absolute record was offensive bias, but we never oh, learned his identity. Okay, okay. yeah. Well, we I didn't. hope he's not right. offensive bias because I don't know yeah, how he offensive got bias. Yeah, I don't know how offensive bias would able, be able to take on the flood if fucking Dr. Halsey can hack his ass. <laughs> well, I've got it like a. Halsey has uh, a precursor. Confirmed. Apparently. <laughs> I've got like a holy shit, what if this happens for Halo Wars 2 as far as, you know, just returning characters or characters that'd be pretty sweet to see pop up for unexplained reasons. I mean, we shot Guilty Smark with a Spartan laser a few times. Maybe that didn't kill him. <laughs> well, we know it didn't. So I mean, yeah, maybe he, he showed he up. That's another actually Say that again? good. Sorry, you cut out. What did he do? He reawakened as Charkus. Uh, oh, that no, no, stole well, Rubicon, and he's gone to find the Forerunners, where presumably oh, he's okay, Bastion. Okay. Bastion. 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 Oh, he's Bastion. Okay, all right. Well, that explains. Oh, no, no, he's no, not no. Bastion. He's looking for Bastion, just like the Builder. I imagine no, I would... he is. Yeah. Well, how does this have to do with Overwatch, though? What is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> when did that come? In? Bastion. Oh, well, let's on. let's face. Oh uh, God. Oh God! Fuck you! To, to connect those two dots. Fuck you! <laughs> Sorry, my mind is in Halo mode right now, and then you just go and drop Overwatch, and I'm thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what else? Well, Reinhardt kind of looks like the didact. Oh God! Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I meant. German. Yeah. Uh, Deutsch. Speaking of though, um, Guilty Spark. He, if again, if it's post-war, if we're back to the Ark. This is another great opportunity to bring him back into the story. I mean, I've been—I was disappointed he wasn't yeah. in Halo Four. I was disappointed he—well, I was initially disappointed he wasn't in Halo Five, but <laughs> now I'm kind of glad he wasn't. And then they had that tease. I remember. I think it was Episode Four of Spartan Ops when Halsey says, "An uh, like an alien AI made from human memories," and it was like, "Oh, guilty God. spark, of course." And everyone thought, "Guilty spark, guilty spark," and then it wasn't. Then they went nowhere. Yeah. Like so, so many things. Yeah. So, uh, I, I wonder if, um, I was going to mention this later, but I guess it ties directly into Halo Wars 2 the way I was thinking about it. I wonder if we're going to get a Hunt the Truth style podcast series leading up to Halo Wars, and oh, that could be a, like, Guilty Spark talking about his journey, and then it kind of leads up to, feeds into the beginning of Halo Wars 2. I mean, that'd be really good because Hunt the Truth was a very uh, solid platform for uh, people to understand some of the uh, the intricacies of the books, you know, yeah. that kind of content. And the Forerunner stuff is very esoteric. I mean, uh, it's a significant minority of people who are familiar with like, the depth of that part of the universe. Yeah, the, the so barrier Hunt the Truth style narrative would suit that very well, I think. Yeah, yeah. and having Tim Dadabo doing that would be... Oh, God, that natural. would be fantastic. I mean, that'd be right, fantastic. I bet. He'd be free to do something like that, and because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his agent, actually. You know, like, what if he reached out to, uh, oh man, what's the damn place that our Keegan Michael Keys, uh, the lockup midnight facility? So, what if he, like, reached out there and broke him out? <laughs> <laughs> and they have, like, a prison break scenario and then he's explaining to him you know here's what's happening and this is what you missed and you were onto something and blah 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 you know i think it'd be kind of cool yeah, that'd be good. Find some of these characters yeah. together hmm. because as it stands i don't know whether we'll ever see mr jero ever again yeah he's hot right the first now. time say that again that's what we thought the first time yeah. he's just a guy in the graphic novel. And we never thought about it twice. Right. And then bam! Not the truth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people got very emotionally attached to him, myself included. And oh, that yeah. first episode of season two, where, you know, they've got the music playing and uh, oh. he's like banging on the glass and he's shouting and screaming because. Uh, I'm not because ashamed Jack to say, I cried tried. during that. I, yeah. I, I, was, I was tearing up at that point. It's like, oh, God, what have they done to you? That <laughs> like, it, really it's story. Drove not, not, home. Yeah. And, and a sort of horror that Halo hasn't really done before in just yeah. how you know, depicting how somebody really psychologically just 
breaks. Yeah. yeah. We've had good horror from the flood, but psychological horror, which you, mm. they've dabbled in. This was a whole different level that yeah. was fantastically done. And yeah, I, I like that idea of a, another sort of podcast series for it to lead up to Halo Wars. Uh, if not, um, like you were talking about Guilty Spark, at the very least, maybe some uh, crew logs from the Spirit of Fire to kind yeah. of get us uh, going with that. Hashtag like find the nail. spirit. <laughs> yes, yes. There you go. And that actually reminds me because uh, in our before we started recording, Harspis talked about talking about uh, the Halo Escalation Library Edition. There's a bit of commentary in there. If you remember, if uh, anybody watching remembers issue six of Escalation, where we got that little tease of the Spirit of Fire with the Flood Infection form on it. If I recall Remember correctly, that, that was one of the only things that really stuck out to me. Yeah, the whole thing well, was just, like, All just right, putting that out there to make sure. I want to give everybody proper context. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Right. I'm sure this group remembers. Mm. But anyway, so if I recall correctly, in the library edition, uh, at that scene, Brian Reed talks about how that's not necessarily set in present day. Uh, like I've got the quote here, the re- actually. Yeah, go go ahead and read it if you want. It says uh, he says. And there she is, the spirit of fire. The when shot of this uh, is not the present day, but I won't be saying more about that here. It is revealed, however, in an upcoming anthology project. Oh, there you go. So And then then he goes on to say, that's also where the story of this flood critter is resolved. I've read the script. It's exciting. So fractured. So, so that's a reference to Fractures, right? It it could be Fractures. It could be um, it could be Tales from Subspace, since they're both anthologies. But, he says yeah. script specifically, so I'm well, inclined still have, to think yeah. tales. Yeah, the, right. Um, so right. That yeah, that's what right. I was going to say. But um, so that's potentially might have some sort of lead into whatever to Halo fi- into Halo Wars. I almost said Halo mm. Five for some reason. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, Halo Five's like coming out next year, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it didn't come out in twenty twenty. 15? No. No, no. It was some side game, I think, that uh, nobody <laughs> remembers. It was, some old, it was an old story. Like it. They were throwing <laughs> some ideas around, they wanted to get some feedback, and then they said, alright, we'll release the real Halo 5 next year. There you go. Halo there 5 you go. colon for real. <laughs> <laughs> but I think In that's actually a perfect to... segue, because our next topic... Did anyone have any, what, anything else to say about Halo Wars? Uh, I'm I love do... excited uh, for just... Even if it's Halo Wars, like the gameplay is exactly the same, I'll love playing it because I love the original Halo Wars. Uh, if there's no blood, I quit. If there's I no mean, what? I know there's a trailer, but if the cinematics aren't done the same way that they did last time, oh, with blur, yeah, game, the blur. like time, the timeline mode or whatever theater mode, which was like just the best thing to happen from that game, and for some reason, no other game has had that where you can just watch all the cinematics front to back. They better have that. <laughs> oh yes, they, de- they definitely should. I think because the cinematics will be done by Blur again. So if they, if the, at the very least, if they don't have that in the game itself, I would be surprised if they didn't have that through the Halo channel, like they did with Halo Two Anniversary. Oh right, yeah. yeah. No, I, I actually kind of hope they don't. <laughs> yeah, oh, I haven't yeah, I don't. The Halo channel in ages. Yeah, I, I it's, love it Halo still channel. doesn't really work. It's just... It's like half-assed. It's super like, hey, wouldn't this be cool? Yeah, all right. Well, is anybody still working on it? No, we forgot to pay more people to really <laughs> build it up. Yeah, kind of like the Master Chief Collection. Mm. Yeah, bloody hell. I was playing that uh, just the other day with a friend, and we had we spent more time in the bloody menu than we did actually playing the game, just trying to load up... Uh, uh, Try, trying to load up a campaign mission is ridiculous. Yeah. So a quick double segue into what you're talking about. You're saying what about the next uh, Reclaimer game slash Halo 6? Well, what not if quite yet. is it one not, and not quite Halo yet. 3 anniversary? Well, I didn't get to say what I wanted to say, though. <laughs> okay, oh, no. Quick thing on Halo Wars, yeah. And there's something okay, before Toa, the next Reclaimer saga. Yes. On your, uh, your, for your leak video you posted last night, Yep. and you said in the bottom left you thought it wasn't Kodiak. Thing like somebody, on, uh, somebody on yeah, Reddit pointed on... out that it could be, since we I'm... just had that, that specific set yeah. revealed. I'm 99.99% sure it's actually a Cyclops. I've, because I've, very I've seen similar people comment on, on the new Megaplox series of yeah. Cyclops. And it very well could a be. That was, my whole, that was my whole point was saying it could just as well be a Cobra. Because that's the first thing I thought when I saw it, was, was the Cobra tank. So it's really too hard, early to say, but it is interesting. The nice thing about the 
the, I think the reason he like um, that Reddit user latched onto Kodiak, and it's very understandable, is because we got that Mega Block set very recently, Speci- and it was specifically marketed for Halo Wars Two. Hmm. It so. sounds pretty definitive, mm. or just like some really good lines crossed together. Yeah, it's. I mean, they it, released it, it that flood-infected Cyclops as well. I remember. Yeah, exactly. That. I remember that, and it's like, yeah, that's. It's a lot of potential that they they have the UNSC Walker. They got um, the UNSC uh, bike thing. I don't remember what it's called. So, does anyone remember back in? I think it must have been 2013. Uh, 343 released a, uh, I, I'd say survey, sort of survey type thing, uh, about the Mega Bloks, uh, with a series of options saying, what sets would, uh, from what species would you like to see? And an option on there was precursors. Really? They actually had, I like, imagine that. that, the, the grand reveal of the precursors and their, you know, their esoteric neural physics and that was in Mega Bloks. <laughs> you know what is as hilarious as that sounds that would be a great way to get some people in on that particular part of the lore I guess I guess I said, people wanted people, it's... a new Mombasa police department <laughs> yep <laughs> alright yeah, well, we I mean, more people want to learn about the that. NMPD than they do the precursors <laughs> then fine I know we know that audience then it's yeah. fine they know that yeah they're catering to their audience, so I can't blame them. Yeah. But, so I think that I think that wraps up Halo our discussion for Halo Wars Two. The next subject would be uh, potential uh, Halo Five future Halo Five content. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I jumped the gun there. I forgot. Yes, about you that. did. Yes, you did. You son oh, of a damn bitch. it, Drew. <laughs> so over the gun now. So, <laughs> when do we think? What do we think about the real Halo Five coming? No, I'm kidding. I just got to indulge uh, Ar- Arispus for a, qu- for a quick I'll, second. I'll punt this super hard. I, I mentioned this on uh, Evolved recently. I think Warzone Firefight is it. After that, zero Halo 5 content. We well, actually said, have... Well, we have it from Karma. There's more coming. From yeah, they said that, that there was it. more. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. That. This June thing, this, uh, this next thing that they talked about. I'm just saying, after that, that's it. There's no, like, fall Halo 5 stuff. No more... Like, this is it. This summer is going to be the end of Halo Five. I don't know because they said that they they had plans beyond um, the what they'd already revealed, like their plans up to Warzone and whatnot. For now, time? obviously, that could o- they, that could honestly only mean like they're going to release more wreck items, like you know everything after Warzone could just be another Hog Wild style update. But there's always potential I, for something more. I highly doubt all that. I think when these when this when this stuff drops, and like. The, the spool up for Halo Wars begins I think you're going to see Halo 5 like I don't want to say support because you know we're going to have HCS going until Halo 6 is like well out in the wild and you're going to have just like how you saw in, like Master Chief Collection HCS stuff happening like leading up to and shortly after Halo 5 came out like you're going to see this handoff and I mean you see Master Chief Collection is I don't want to say dead, but it's not a priority anymore for 343. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think the same thing's going to happen for Halo 5, and I think we won't see virtually any real big content other than, you know, what we know or what's this June thing. I, I don't remember what the deal is with it, what the big hook is. Um, I know, oh, yeah, that's right, golf clubs and uh, and what else? <laughs> <laughs> But I, I post that stuff. I don't think there's going to be content like any kind of like story DLC or yeah. That's pretty oh, much man. that was rolled out day one. I'm very sorry yeah. to say. Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, and I, yeah. I don't think whether it, it should you know, is another conversation. But I mean, it's not. Well, like I was really uh, keeping my fingers crossed for like invasion and stuff like that, like making them kind of pushing that. And when Firefight was revealed, I was like, oh man, it'd be sweet if invasion came back. But no, I, I think Firefight. I mean, that's be- why I thought. Back like last year, when we first learned about the Promethean soldiers, that that's why they were being introduced so that they'd be playable because they fit the human sort of uh, um, so, yeah. box perfectly. Can yeah. you imagine uh, instead of having a little booster to the right to the left or to uh, the, the little booster that yeah. you have the, the teleport thing? That'd be makes sense. Cool. That'd be sick. They prototyped it in Halo 4 as well with the night teleport as an armor yeah. ability, but it got cut. So I mean, it's not like the groundwork isn't there for them to build on. But it's yeah. possible that it just didn't feel right. I mean, I think a lot of ideas that we might have 
they've tried and it didn't work. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's potent- there's a lot of things. Game development is crazy to put it very, 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 very lightly. So who knows what they tried and did and what we want and that just didn't yeah. Work. I mean, Josh Holmes said that Halo Five started out several times larger than it actually ended up being. Man. So I believe I that's that. Probably, and I'm that's sure. I mean, if there's any reflection of, of that, it's in the campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Cutscenes like, that I, literally just yeah. don't make any sense. <laughs> I, I've said it before, I, and I'm still confident of it. Hey, I'm sure Halo Five was originally what we got as Halo Five was originally like the first half, maybe of whatever that original game was going to be because you know once they went from the trilogy to the saga idea they had to expand the story out pretty quickly for their next game mm-hmm. you know like maybe the the reveal of cortana would have been like the halfway point of whatever the original halo 5 was and then there would have been some extra <laughs> beyond that who knows so um uh Oren, from one of my co-hosts tetrahedrite on uh evolved like his idea and I, he told me this recently and i can't believe it like I'd love to see somewhere maybe he posted this or something, but his idea for Halo 5 before we knew anything about it was basically the plot of, or no, his idea for Halo 4 was basically the plot of Halo 5. <laughs> and like he was hoping that that would be Halo 4 and then Halo 5 would be like the fallout of that. But Halo 4, he was like, they just wasted all this time like running around <laughs> trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. And then at the end it happened and you're like, Okay, this could have all happened in a much shorter period of time, and then we could have had Cortana kind of lose her mind and and do what she's been doing, and then Halo Five would be like that the battle between the created and the everybody else and all that. I stuff. don't think I can put into words just how against that idea I am. I feel <laughs> my very, very soul. Oh but man, we're we gonna have some Lord of the Rings. Uh, Battle Style. of the Five Armies Giant stuff. Battle of Five Armies thing happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great if Halo Wars 2 has that, though. That, uh, yes. God, yes. Those factions. For sure. The more factions, yeah. the better. Translates really yeah. well. If it's post-war, bring us, get in some, get some Swords of Sanghelias in there. If the yeah. multiplayer, if nothing else. Hey, don't and forget to go interact- forwards, I think, in the series, it'd be interesting if, you know, if we see this disintegration of the Covenant, we see different kinds of Covenant groups yeah. well, uh like mercenary I've, groups uh composer cultists is an idea that has come up before super, people uh super grunts yeah <laughs> stolts an army of stolts yes. give us oh, the stolts God. Skull. the OP. stolts skull. it's got to be a halo wars too come on same with God, uh yes. same with um humans right i mean hunt the truth really brought back the insurrection in a really strong and interesting way and yeah, gave us the new colonial alliance and so, still done very Zane little, and, and the uh, the guy at the end of initiation who we still don't know who he is. Drake, Admiral, Admiral Drake. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and the, the first the first Halo Wars game has the very distinct uh, the the, the very faction. distinct thing about it that you fought humans. Yeah, it's the only game that you fought you really fought humans in for the Halo series, like. Leading into Halo 5, when they were building up this, like, man, that UNSC is out to find Chief, We, I was saying, like, what if we have to shoot other people? Like, that would be crazy. And now... That would have been you know, great. It, yeah. it turned. It turns out, though, I mean, you can't now, because it, Halo 5 was a teen-rated game. And I would have... To, I would bet my hat that the next every Halo game to come out going forward is going to be teen-rated. And so you're not going to have, like, you know, people on people straight up shooting somebody in the face stuff. So, that with depends. Halo Wars, maybe they can get around it because it's a real time strategy game, and you know that's so. that's a visceral. Yeah. But it, it honestly depends. Like a lot, there's a there's quite a few of the Halo. Halo was always kind of a light M in my opinion. So it being yeah. rated T is just felt kind of like oh the ESRB finally woke up. Mm-hmm. So otherwise, yeah, like, like, like oh, when, it turns on the Peggy, there isn't any maturity. Yeah, because on the Peggy system, it's been 16 plus since day one. So, I mean, the real Lem stuff came in the form of the flood and that scene at the end of Composer in Halo Four. Oh God, like... yeah, that that was <laughs> okay though. But Quite so something. I think we've definitely finished with the Halo Five future content. So and we're kind of well, just as a final notes. note. Oh yes, a go final ahead. Note on that. I got some. Um, There's been a um a conspiracy theory amongst people due to the brute weapon category and for oh, yeah. Halo Five. So the conspiracy theory's been that there's going to be a large amount of Halo Wars 2S content added to Halo 5, kind of as a joint promotional thing. 
Hmm. Things like spikers, or maybe choppers, or maybe some news, maybe whatever the hell the chieftain's bodyguards are using in the cover. Yeah, that, like, like the ass spike thing. That going hammer, forward, I, I largely see it as being um as being rec content, which that would all fit into. Yeah, yeah. The, gra- the energy mace looks uh, fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that would be, awesome. be pretty sweet. And I mean, we've already got some hints at Halo Wars 2 in current rec content with mentions yeah. of like Jiral Hanai uh, thrall colonies and stuff like that yeah. um, in certain weapons, so it'll be interesting to see where they go with that from there. Yeah. I, want, I want there to be a uh, like, legendary rec called Hammer Time where you have two hammers. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's that is definitely insane. <laughs> I also it. think that the AD forty nine, as mentioned in the Stinger armor, is absolutely the Wasp. That was tough mm-hmm. for me before, and it's going to be the AD forty nine Wasp, and maybe it's going to be added in Warzone Firefight. I don't know, I don't know. but that's my gut feeling. Was that a fl- was that supposed to be a flying vehicle? Because then I'd yeah, probably it's say to be it's like a replacement for I, the horn. Then I say that I doubt it. 343 seems ad- like adamant to avoid fly- human flying vehicles for some reason. I thought we were promised a UNSC flying vehicle, though. Not necessarily in Halo 5. He did, yeah. Grim just said... We go on in Spot and Strike, technically. Yeah. yeah. With the, uh, the okay, Gestro Vito. Yeah. Pulling a technically there. Yeah. But I think this is a... Uh, Harrisbiss, did you have anything else to say about future Halo 5 content? Um, I thought it sounded like you did. And then... I, I think I did. Yeah, I, it was more relating to the mature rated con- uh, stuff. Um, yeah. What was it? Oh yes, it was about um, the composer's forge, but that's completely unrelated to any of the things we were talking about there. But well, I don't know if you want to hear the, it or not. Well, maybe this next <laughs> topic time. would be the perfect time to bring it up: Halo Six or the next Reclaimer game. Yes. Hmm. Uh, uh, you know. Games are changing. Um, shooters, specifically, have have really just not too long ago, probably like five or six years ago. Shooters were in two categories. You had your modern combat, and you had your sci-fi shooter. Yeah. And now you have just everything across the board. You have your World War t- World War One shooter coming out. You have oh yes. You have just online it's multiplayer exciting. only MOBA stuff. You got Borderlands. You know, mm. on the horizon, there's dooms out, bringing back the old school stuff. The shooter genre has finally got out of its Call of Duty phase, and it's and actually it, and incorporating it new like ideas. It's splintered on because Call of that, Duty has gotten out of the Call of Duty phase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's it's splintered on a level that's almost uh, concerning because if you splinter yeah. it too much, then you're not going to have the sales numbers that companies like this want to look for because you're going to have almost too much variety in a way. It's it's great for the consumer. But mm. if you really get attached to a uh, franchise and then that doesn't sell well enough, like, well, whoops, you're not going to get a sequel to, you know, um, Homefront the Revolution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest, but, I'm surprised uh, I got a sequel at all with its original sales numbers. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, another, that's another discussion. That's another discussion. So, so with that in mind, what I would hope, because I'm, I'm, I'm over here, like, I'm 30. You know, I've been playing Halo for, since day one. So I I welcome change at this point, and I'm I'm yeah, really liking absolutely. what they're doing with Halo, as far as kind of modernizing it, but still keeping this like core identity of like this is what Halo is. We understand it. Look, we're three four three. We're kind of new kids on the block, but we've been around long enough now to show you that, you know, we are competent in creating a good experience. Whether that experience functions on a technical level every now and then, <laughs> that's just the the horrors of, of game development in the modern era. But you know, say what you will about Master Chief Collection, those games felt like Halo, and it was solid. I mean, it, like playing Halo Three at sixty frames was unbelievable for me. It is. But, it really well, is. But I don't want. Well, I'm curious thing. about going forward. Something really different from Halo. Yeah, what I'm curious about going forward is um, sort of where 343 goes with the gameplay in uh, in Halo as a shooter from now, because their philosophy of um, the Spartan, you, you know, using using the Spartan suit as its own sort of weapon, um, because that was you can make the guns feel really powerful, you can make the player feel really powerful. Is their sort of dichotomy that they've been working on, and Spartan abilities in Halo Five were a perfect sort of middle ground there. 
Um, so yeah, it felt natural. How, where do they go from there? What do they do to build on that? Because I think they got the formula worked out pretty perfectly, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think the gameplay is really solid where we're at right now. The thing that I'm curious about is, in the wake of a Destiny Division Overwatch world, where things are not so defined, it would be interesting yeah. to see if Halo sticks to its guns. Haha, <laughs> lol. Um, <laughs> And, and really just continues to put out a Halo game, or if it says, hey, this is like Halo for a new generation, this is a, you know, you have this experience, this story still, you have these characters still, but now you get to play it in a way that is almost alien to the diehard Halo fan base. Mm. And let's just face it, any numbered Halo, any true Halo sequel, is going to be met with just people gnashing of teeth and people pulling their hair out and all that stuff and that's great that's what it should be we don't want assassin's creed you know we don't want something that's like oh it's another one of those we want it to be you know the thing that we love and we want to see it grow and evolve evolved and (laughs) (laughs) i'd love to see halo like reflect on what destiny the division um insert another game here wildlands ghost recon wildlands sounds fucking crazy it's an open world i mean the big thing the big so if last if last generation was call of dutification of everything and like uh mix that with a little bit of gears of war ification of everything you know like it like sony's number one uh franchise of the of the last generation was basically like hey what if we made gears of war and indiana jones into a game and that worked really well for them <laughs> everything kind of had a trend to it this year this generation it's open world games like just so overwhelmingly open world yeah. halo the closest we've gotten to that is odst ODST. Yeah. and and that's cool but i don't really want like I don't want the next major Halo game to play like ODST with like flashbacks and stuff, but I think, I think there's a precedence there where we could do an open world Halo game where you're chief, you're flying from planet to planet or whatever, or you're like the crew that's the gang of people that's standing there at the last scene of Halo Five are like, mm-hmm. what do we do now? And you just kind of go on. This I was going to bring that up actually. Yeah, that's yeah. the perfect platform to have uh, because I mean they they concepted. Um, Infinity to have a weapons down mission to the extent where it actually had fast travel stations. Heck yeah. So imagine where they could take that whole concept of having Infinity as a kind of a hub world. Yeah. And, you know, you, you build your own Spartan, whatever, you know, you, you play off that whole thing, create your hero, and you go off out into the Halo universe and do all these various different things that open world games are doing. I think it'd be really interesting. Yeah. I, I, I want Halo open world a la, like, uh, almost... A, like damn near a mass effect situation right mm. like where yeah, you're going be a plant to planet great idea. yeah i know the there were those early focused. halo 5 yeah there were those early halo 5 leaks which were largely discredited but they talked yeah. about this open world experience for halo 5 which a lot of people seem to like when that's like hey this sounds really cool yeah so i mean if nothing else there's there's this recorded exper- you know this recorded instance of positive reaction to such a to such an idea dude my so. my sorry i'm i don't want to overstep everybody but like no, i'm sure that it's out there my Damn it, <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get for bringing a podcast around a podcast my <laughs> this is my like dream halo game going into halo 5 before we really knew where it was going with the dual <laughs> campaign and all that was you have chief show up somewhere you're playing as chief you're like getting in a in a pelican or whatever and you're flying to a place trying to track down cortana like just one step behind you get there you fight through a place blah 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 and then the next chapter is uh um lock showing up and going what the hell just happened or vice versa like shot lock shows up goes what the hell just happened you play a little detective thing you shoot some leftover uh prometheans or covenant or whatever that are also trying to find cortana and then the next chapter is you playing what you, what he found out so it's almost odst style but it's in yeah. a way that's like a little I mean, more thinking about resource conservation in uh, games development that almost seems Seems like it would be quite a practical route to go down. Yeah, because you get to double use everything. I mean, Halo loves doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All the goddamn time. <laughs> Since day one, it's tradition. 
Yeah, but it's, it works well, you know, yeah, for, when, for the way that they've always been. Sometimes. In Halo. It can work well. Like, you know, I, talking about Halo 5 specifically on um, Escape, I I had the same experience as Harvest talk, talked about in mm. one of his uh, breakdowns uh, blogs on the level. It I didn't really think about it that I was playing replaying the same level in reverse until like halfway through the damn thing. And like, wait a minute, I've been here before. And, and that's hell, the best kind of design yeah, there, and is even making going, you yeah. unaware of it. Yeah, and even going back to Halo CE, I didn't find out till years later. Betrayals. People talking about, yeah, I didn't oh. talk, find out until years later that people hated going backwards. And I, and then it suddenly clicked. Wait a minute, I was going backwards. I didn't mm-hmm. even think about it that first time because I was just having so much fun. The, mm. Going back, it felt like a fresh experience to me. But if you do it right, like then. Two Betrayals is a great example where now you have different. Uh, you have you have banshees available to you. You're fighting yep. kind of like a different configuration and stuff. Like there's a way to do it, right? Yeah, it's much more. Yeah, it's mu- yeah. And and doing that and making Halo an open world game on the engine that they have, I mean that's kind of un- unreasonable. But if you do it this way, where it's maybe playing back through an environment or something like that, like so, say you play as you know uh, this crew, and then you switch back to the Infinity, who's also kind of dealing with their situation, and you're going through the same environments, but now you're like in ships and it's just a totally different you know look at the environment but you have the same assets so you don't have to do twice as much yeah i don't know but you know it is there's the world of of first person shooters is very different and halo's big risk right now which is what they ran into during the transition was fatigue like you don't want to fatigue the greater population that buys your game in the millions because yeah. we're not going to get fatigued because we'll eat up every single piece of Halo lore. Content period, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. But you don't want to have Halo 6 feel like the natural direct pred- uh, you know, successor to Halo 5 so much so that it's like, yeah, this is just part two. You know, you don't want that. So I want it to yeah. feel drastically different. And actually that Ignoring the whole bit about uh, resource convers- con- uh, conservation, because this idea would could, would, not be, would not yeah it would not work well with this. But hey, man, you got a Halo, you got a whole new Xbox yeah, coming up next year. So yeah, don't worry about it. potentially, yeah. But um, no, I'm thinking like it's we're talking about all this idea, this potential for an open world game, and in a way, the created story is kind of primed for that. If you have if you have Infinity yep. serving as a hub world, mm-hmm. you could still and you could still incorporate both Osiris and uh, Blue Team into this. You know, having them going out on missions to, uh, like, let's for example, let's talk, that map, uh, the map, um, I think whatever the space station map that came out. Algeria station. station, yeah. Yeah, it's like you know that. You know that is that is a prime uh, setup for a great for a potential mission. You have Osiris go out there and try and recapture that that station, and then you know once you're back on the hub, on on the Infinity or Sankelios, whatever your hub world is, um, maybe even both, uh, then you could either continue as Osiris or you could choose to switch over to blue to a blue team mission. Yeah, uh, I mean, however, shameless plug here uh, for my own work. I, I, I briefly sort of touched on this um, about um, how I would have done Halo 5 as a concept yeah. in having uh, Blue Team be, you know, the main focus of the narrative by splitting it, splitting it into two games, where Blue Team is obviously this much more sort of personal story, uh, more traditional perhaps, and then Osiris is the main character um, of the uh, of the second game, which focuses more on the setting, on uh, you know Sanghelios, on progressing everything, uh, it would be an interesting sort of concept if you t- took Spartan Ops, which has been completely sort of cut from Halo Five, because they've done all these updates post Halo Five, which is just perfect fodder for Spartan Ops. So if yeah. you had that whole kind of formula with Osiris going out into the setting and examining all these uh, changes which are going on, all these shifts. Uh, in perspectives and that that would be really interesting I think yeah yeah and that that goes back to the reusing of assets which kind of it reusing assets is is just a godsend to developers <laughs> you know they're like oh we get to do this <laughs> like again like, we, we don't have to make more fantastic <laughs> you know um, but I uh, I didn't I can't remember because I don't have the agenda in front of me but did you want to talk about how like what if this was not a Number Halo sequel? Did you want yeah, to the next, that? Yeah, yeah. The next, uh, the next idea would be other potential Halo titles. We could talk about ODST style games, 
uh, Harris versus so talking specific. Method. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, but All right, a so little what more was... specific. You could talk about there was yeah that a great idea of this like. Infin- again, the Infinity is a hub world, but mm-hmm. instead of playing as Osiris or Blue Team, you're playing as your own Spartan, very much more in the style of Mass Effect. Oh, yeah. To yeah. talk about that specifically, which that sounds really damn cool. That sounds like what Spartan Ops should have been and mm. what could potentially be a great game. You could yeah. throw in the Anvil Initiative as well by uh, yes, allowing you, yes, people you to can. play Sanghili. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Port Halo Online to the consoles, please. Just, <laughs> or give it a proper release. Is this the part where we let Logan talk about Halo 6 real quick before we move on to that? No, Logan yeah, is not going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I it's all good. He's just um, here to look pretty. Well, here my... we go. This is the rule. Only Logan t- can talk from now on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone shut up. He just taps people on the on the nose when they get to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my like, dream game that I've talked about on Evolve since we started was... Uh, a headhunters MGS style like oh, God, sneaking yes. around in the dark, you know, like just take Splinter Cell and make it in Halo. You know what I mean? Like yes. that would be the shit. <laughs> it would really be so. Yeah. So, sorry, say again. <laughs> I want to be able to put animals and just put balloons on them and take them to my base. <laughs> yeah. Just start your own Moa farm. You know? Yep. Oh God. <laughs> No, but I think if only uh, we had Moa Herder here. I thought I heard you say Batman. So that's happy. also kind of like just think of, think of uh, Arkham Combat, like Splinter Cell sneaking around, MGS style, like open world. I mean, yep. get behind the enemy lines and just wreck wreck house as a headhunter unit. Uh, yep. That would be fantastic. I would wreck love with that. your wrecks. Mm-hmm. It'd be a great but, idea for potentially like you could have up to continue with the four player co op potential, but instead of you could have it in such a way where you know if you, you could you could play missions as by like by yourself, oh, or yeah. if we bring people in, maybe the mission changes in some minor way, be it just extra dialogue or mm-hmm. different ways mm-hmm. to approach encounters. Oh, and, you know, uh, um, funny that we mentioned Overwatch earlier because I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the other day, you know, Halo, Halo has, you know, at least one or two memorable characters. I think yeah, we they're can all probably dead, agree. Though. At least one or two. <laughs> we could have a game which just shamelessly rips off Overwatch and the whole sort of idea of the hero shooter genre oh, as God. a way of getting people more familiar with other characters in the universe. The only challenge there is a lot of them would, I mean, unless you say in the way Overwatch has, like, you have this weapon and that's your weapon. You know what I mean? Like, Johnson has, like, a shotgun and that's his weapon and you can't. Oh, no, Johnson would be a sniper rifle. But yeah. I'm on the United States. He, was the sni- he was the sniper sergeant. If it plays anything like Halo, though, it would be weird because you'd have a bunch of characters that virtually do the same thing. Ah, so forget that. Don't, don't make it play like Halo. Just do something else. Do something yeah. different. It's a side game. Nobody should care. Um, one of the more realistic things that I've thought of recently was, you know, everybody's been thinking uh, a lot of the Halo, or a lot of the E3 hype in general has been like, man, what's going to be the fallout shelter of this E3 that comes out and just like consumes everyone for three weeks and blows up the mobile market and God, I want a Halo Wars tower defense game. I want a Halo Wars tower defense game on my on my tablet so bad. <laughs> like it. it's so dumb, but I just want it. And especially after playing Clash Royale like nonstop for the last six months, I I would totally eat up a, a Halo Wars game on my on my mobile. Never do a twin stick shooter again. That didn't work. Just okay. stop it. I don't know because I wouldn't. I liked Spartan Strike a lot. I thought it was a vast yeah, improvement. I didn't get Spartan Strike because it's not on the freaking Xbox One, which makes no sense to me. That is, I will admit, that is yeah, uh, that is stupid. That is stupid that it never came to, especially since Assault did with yeah. the new mode. That was a lot of fun. I love yeah, the, the flood defense yeah. mode. The co-op thing. Well, yeah. I played that with David. It was great. Yeah, but uh, I would actually like to see another Spartan game. Just mm-hmm. because, as I did, Spartan Strike was a va- was a vast improvement. But yes, please bring it to the Xbox, especially yeah. with like the. It seems like they're doing such heavy integration between Windows yeah, 10 they have and Xbox Windows, One. Uh, they so it, need, it would need to happen. Universal Windows Program or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, the Xbox so, yeah, they, No, like if they make oh. if they make another oh, they make um, one. game, okay. it will. It's not that they have to port it over to the Xbox. It will just work. 
Like if you make a yeah. game for Windows 10 or you, if you make a game for Xbox One, going forward, using the protocols that uh, th- that Microsoft have put in place, it will just work. So yeah. it would be a, a question of like, what I think what I think happened with um, Spartan Strike was they were like, well, we could pay them to put it on the Xbox One, like the developers to finish that work, or we could just stop doing this all together and save some money. And I don't think the benefit of them putting it on the Xbox One outweighed the cost of putting it on the Xbox One. But going forward, I don't think that would be a problem. So I, yeah. I think if they get any more of those Spartan games, like what you're looking for, um, it'll definitely be on both platforms. I mean, Halo Wars 2 is going to be on both platforms. Yep. Everybody's been like this stupid rumor about Halo 5 coming to Xbox One. I'm so glad they squashed that so quickly. They were like, yeah, that's not happening. Stop it. Wait, Halo 5 isn't coming to the Xbox One? I mean, to the... <laughs> I the thought what? That's, <laughs> no, yeah, it's the PC. Yeah, PC on PC and Mac. No, um, <laughs> it's not coming to Windows 10, but I promise you, any future Halo game will be on Windows 10. It, it Probably will. imagine yeah. that if Halo went back to being a Mac exclusive right now. Oh God! <laughs> It'll come full circle. It's being developed by Bungie. <laughs> Hey, I said it before. Destiny fell apart. Three four three loves stealing old, old old ideas, so it it just works. It works for that. For sure, they they just stopped making software. On, anyways, um, I I think uh, I think that you'll get anything that we're talking about. Like even if they make like a mobile game, you'll have it on your Xbox One. You'll have it on Windows Ten. It'll be on Android, iOS. There'll be some way to play it. It won't be on phone from one device to the other. So like yeah. Yeah, um, that'd be funny if it like came out on everything but Windows Phone. <laughs> like, you know what? At this point, I would not be surprised. <laughs> the fact that the Halo channel they had to wait on the Halo channel pissed me <laughs> off. I got the Windows Phone for you guys. Yeah, give me the freaking Halo channel at launch. Don't don't make me wait for your fucking updates. <laughs> so funny. It was so <sighs> unfortunate how that went out. It, yeah, that that pissed me off. I, I, it's just. Eh. Anyway, what's another? Did we want to segue into the television show now? Just... Yes, let's say we'll we'll segue to our final topic. All right. the Halo television show. Um, so which last... isn't coming ever. Yeah, which is no, it's coming in 2015. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Alongside Uncharted 4 and uh, Final Fantasy 15 and. <laughs> um, so, last we heard, it was Showtime, right? Is that where it kind of? They were in talks with Showtime to put it up which would be a great a great way to do it but we haven't heard the last thing i heard was probably almost a year ago now where they confirmed that it was still being pro- like in, it was still in pre-production mm. but again that was a year ago at least i think i think at a minimum we get a teaser an announcement a channel like they commit to a channel and like a window of when they're going to mm. try to debut the first episode i don't think it's this year i think it's next year yeah. Next year at E3, we get an actual trailer for it. Um, yeah. Or if not E3, then uh, Comic Con. Yeah, it Com- seems like Xbox trying is trying to avoid avoid all that TV shit from what was it 2013? Don Matrix. Yeah. yeah, the Don Matrix era. It's a very solid point. I'm, I'm, I mean, a quick spinoff on that. I'm yeah. really curious how Microsoft and Sony are going to be talking about hardware at E3 this year when not yeah. talking about hardware has done really well for them the last couple of years. <laughs> um, I was kind of hoping we would have all that out by now, the way that we got the announcement of the Xbox stuff and the PlayStation stuff in like May, and then we just saw games in June. Um, but I, I don't know. No, you're right. You know, that, that, that might be a bad play because for everybody who's not interested in it, like we are very, very interested in it, but the average, mm. you know, like, person is not, yeah. But the, yeah. But I mean, that's, that's when I say that I'm usually talking about the, the pre E3 press show. It's always possible that some interviewer will bring it up at some point, or they might reveal it during the E3, um, if they season have, or week, whatever, what have you. Yeah. If they have those uh, end of the day, well, yeah, Xbox, Xbox wraps has, ups, that would be a great place to potentially, dro- you know, drop some teasers for that. That's that's a perfect, perfect location to be honest. I mean, the Xbox put out their little trailer for, hey, don't forget, we're gonna have Xbox access stuff like, yeah, yeah, all day, every day after our press press conference. So that would be a good time to do that. Um, and that stuff gets covered because it gives. Like IGN and all those guys love that stuff because it gives yep. them more to talk about than yep. just rehashing everything that they talked about in the first day. They're like, yeah, okay, and here's more another 
here's that whole thing that you just saw on Monday, but like from a different angle. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> so that would be perfect. Um, I, I wonder if we're going to get a like all the love that we got um, when Master Chief Collection was announced and the Nightfall trailer happened and the Halo Five trailer and all the like. Oh my god, that was like uh, E3 that was, was, was unbelievable. That was you know Bonnie Ross was just up there grinning ear to ear, just nonstop. <laughs> yeah. like, Look at all yeah. this Halo. And then and, the uh, result left some stuff to be desired, but you yeah, know, at the time, at the moment, it was like shit. Yeah, yeah they're, they're doing a fantastic job of giving us this content. Exactly. And, you know, I, I kind of I felt like E3 2015 was a bit of an underwhelming moment for Halo, but that's okay because it was like, hey, we don't really have a lot to talk about. We just want to give it to you. We're you too busy I mean? rewriting our game. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> but uh, but I th- I'm hoping that this year is another one of the 2014 years where they have a lot to talk about because they've been working on it this whole time. Um. So maybe there there will be a like, here's gameplay and all that stuff of Halo Wars 2. Here's a trailer for the TV show, um, and then here's a teaser for Halo 6 or whatever the next Halo thing for yeah. next year would be. Oh, by Halo the- on Xbox Scorpio. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, oh, by the way, go to your app store on your phone and download this uh, Halo Tower Defense game for <laughs> Luke. We did that for him. We love podcast yeah. involved. <laughs> Regarding the actual narrative of the TV show, uh, I've ever God. since Spartan Ops began, um, and there was that one throwaway line right at the start about Covenant Asylum Seekers on Earth. I have wanted a District 9 style or Halo story, and I think oh, the television God. show would be fantastic for that. That would be well, fa- That would. I, uh, I think after Chappie and. Um... And, oh God! And Elysium, uh, Neil Blomkamp might want to consider doing TV instead of movies because he's <laughs> starting to kind of regurgitate everything. So is, I can... liked Elysium, but Chappie. Oh, God, I wanted to walk out on that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch it in theaters. I was really hyped. You you didn't miss time. anything. Like, it was I've... it was terrible. It's funny because he seems to be taking these base concepts about. Halo. Like, I mean, Elysium is literally <laughs> in the Halo ring, and then Chappie yeah. is about uh, you know AI. It seems like he's just taking these Halo ideas he had and turning them into original concepts. Well, he 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 got all that build up and then did get, didn't get to make the movie. So yeah. in District Nine was clearly guy. like District Nine. I'm pretty sure I've seen it. That had assets in it that they created. Yeah, it's got Halo sniper rifles. Yeah. I remember <laughs> somewhere yeah. in there. I've heard that uh, there's like one of what somebody in there actually has like a Halo Marine helmet. I have to go back and watch. Watch that maybe today yeah, and see if I can find that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Logan, what's your uh, what's your what's your Halo TV show idea? Um, my Halo TV show would actually what would be really cool would be like somewhere between Stargate SG One and Battlestar Galactica. Mm-hmm. That would be a really cool show. BSG, man, you got me right there. I fucking exactly. Love it. It's like. I never like, watched either of those. Oh, you need to. It's Basically, like, yeah, that means to be dealing with the created. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I, that's what I, from what I heard. That the only the only issue that I see with that is, and I've been th- I've been figuring out in my head how this could be reconciled. The Halo TV show needs to be accessible for any old idiot to tune into it and be like, oh, this is what Halo is. I didn't realize it had so many characters and lore and such a universe that is so rich and interesting. The scary part of that would be tuning into like a BSG style Tales of the Infinity after uh, Cortana did what she did and and just being like, what is even happening? Like, <laughs> where is Master Chief? What the well, fuck is I mean, is this is why I say that the worst mistake <laughs> they could make is to do an adaptation. Another bloody adaptation. Like Halo Wars 2. <laughs> Like uh, like the Fall of Reach animated, animated series. series. Oh, Just awful. please it, don't I mean, ever do that again. We've got I'll, the soft material. Yeah. We've yeah. got audio books. Th- it's been out for 14 years. Please, yeah. please don't do <laughs> another one. The thing I'll say is one potential way they could do a partial ad- adaptation without completely fu- you know fucking everything up is they could do you know Master Chief in the Spartan Twos during the Covenant War and have flashbacks to certain instances from that book earlier on. You know, to give people that backstory and get the you know see those bits of lore for the general audience, 
but then focus on these newer stories that are still set in the Covenant War. Taking yeah, that idea flash, further, flash I think it would exactly. be interesting exactly. if they set um, that story you just outlined in the middle, uh, in between Halo 4 and Halo 5, during the period in which Blue Team is doing their own thing. That'd be another great way to They're do just it. just like, I'd, hey, I'd remember that, that time? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Have you guys ever watched Farscape? No. Nope. Oh, you nope. should. That would be, like, throw that into the mix between SG-1 and Bowser Galactica. Throw that in there, too. But that was a great show. Now, and it had a lot of aliens in it. And it was really good. Here's the problem with us hardcore nerds referencing things like Stargate and Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> that is not what Ma- what Microsoft's going to do. It's no. not going to be... You know why? Because the closest thing that we've had to like a really cool, hard sci-fi thing happen was Defiance, and that did awful. Just terrible. It was, I don't think I've heard that word since like 2013. It's okay. You, you don't need to anymore. But <laughs> I, I think if you... See, going into Halo 5, when we thought maybe the show would come out this year or last year or whatever, um, my idea was was Jero. This is before it ended, obviously, but like, have a uh, have like journalists or have a news crew kind of going around the galaxy, figuring out what's going on, like investigating. So you're fine. So like, so then the the, the reader, uh, sorry, the viewer is learning with the show. You always have to do that, you know. If you're that if actually you're sounds a lot like uh, that sounds a lot like um, World War, the way World War Z the book was made, where it's right? like a oh, series of interviews. It, yeah, that be that actually sounds like a really great framework to yeah. tell a, a ton of it, a ton of stories. You could do a nice anthology series out of that. Mm-hmm. I fucking love anthologies. <laughs> Well, and, and a really popular thing right now is where, you know, look at True Detective in American Horror Story, where every season yep. is completely different, like takes yep. place in a totally different group of people, and yep. and that way you can cover more ground. I would definitely be up for that. Yeah, I would love that. I think tonally, if I had to guess what we should expect or prepare ourselves for, is something along the lines of somewhere between Daredevil and, like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where it's going to be slightly campy, but... It's going to have some serious moments. I can see the gonna... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. comparison, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think that's a fitting yeah. comparison. And, and Although, especially at Forward Unto Dawn, I think that level of quality and that level of, like, self-seriousness where it's not... I would kill for another, like, yeah. ha- live-action Halo um, Forward Unto Dawn, like... Just don't have Master quality. Chief say. Just don't have Master Chief say. Call me Master Chief. <laughs> that was that. That just that. I had to pull. I had to stop the episode. When I heard that. <laughs> and, but I mean, that's the one later. thing, right? That's one thing amongst many other great things that that that, that series did. That's, yeah, it was overall good. I've I've come to like it better when over it comes time. To movies and TV shows and stuff. You got to treat Master Chief like you treat the Hulk. You can't have him there the whole time because then yeah. it just destroys everything. And mm-hmm. pulls too much focus away from all the other peripheral characters that now mean nothing. Yeah. But you can't have him yeah, not. The best part of Four Dawn were the first up. three episodes. So yeah, before the chief came in. <laughs> yeah, and when he was in it, he was in it just enough. Like he made a difference. I agree. And then it had such a beautiful, poignant moment on the on the Pelican where it's like these guys are just kids and like it's. They're all kids. It's like yeah. the Spartans are what, like fourteen years old at that point. Yeah. And John's They're just lost kid, Sam yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah, they're all kids yeah. except for the six foot five giant playing Master Chief. <laughs> <laughs> he's th- he's thirty. Daniel Cutmore, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was Cyclops. Yeah, uh, great physical. Uh, Colossus. Colossus. I mean, yeah. sorry, Colossus. Thank you. Wrong. The scene. original Colossus, because now he's been replaced. Yeah, so. by CGI. Right. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, I think that if you have a a show that is focused on a bunch of people who are finding out things, it would be a great way Along with the to audience, teach yeah. people and then at the same time reveal things that matter to us. You know, when like yeah. something shows up and somebody like June just stops by and you're like, holy fucking shit, that was June. You know, yep. like, just have have Nathan Fillion drop in every couple episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I would it love makes it. Sense. Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, you can play one episode. He's uh, Sergeant Reynolds. The next episode, he's uh, Eddie Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Make it like an Easter egg thing. Where Nathan Fillion actually appears in every single episode, but he's like really far in the background. You have oh God, him. yes. What's the uh, what's <laughs> who's, the, who's the guy that's in? There's an achievement for it. He, you know, he's he's in every Halo. Chips he's just over there. Chips Dubo. Chips Dubo. Uh, Chips Dubo's got to be there. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, Sergeant. Oh shit, his Sergeant name. Sergeant Stacker. Is, 
Yes, Pete what? Stacker's got to be there. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, if you could get an episode where you're interviewing Captain Keys and played by Pete Stacker, <laughs> fuck yes. Uh, or hell, even back, like, if you don't want to actually have to show him, just like, you know, have like a behind the, sh- like the over the shoulder shot from behind Keys and then have a uh, Stacker voice it over so the whole episode is him voicing shit over. I just want Michael Ironside somehow in this. <laughs> that would be the best. Oh god, yes. And then and then just have Ron Perlman walk by and you're like, "Holy shit, that was Lord Hood." <laughs> oh god, yes. I swear to Christ, he's he's per- it'd be perfect. Yeah, I I uh and and my final plea for this is for the love of god, put it on AMC or or HBO and just forget about Showtime ever. No again. AMC. Well, at least I I pick I pick Showtime over AMC. Oh, I pick Netflix. I, I don't know. I oh, Netflix, Netflix would be Netflix ideal. Yeah, yeah. Netflix would be the best ideal. HBO would be would be the second best. I just I like a, a, AMC. I I have not been a big fan of. They're doing oh, good with Preacher so far, but I was so not a good. fan of. Uh, I was not a fan of Walking Dead. I just forget about well, Walking Dead. Watch Helen Wheels though. Bad ending. I'd be concerned that if it was on HBO, it would just be Halo, subtitled Tits and Misogyny. <laughs> no, Halo's the get one the show you can watch on HBO with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's the one that doesn't have it. <laughs> Alright, guys, Andy. I think we've all seen the pictures of Vale and Uzi. We know what we want. Yeah? Oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> well... I think that's the perfect note to end on. Yeah. <laughs> I feel proud of myself. Uh, before we uh, before we end, though, I'd like to just say, as a quick wrap up, let's each say uh, what we think we're actually going to see, like just in terms of like trailers or content, not necessarily but, like what we're going to see at at any uh, three this year. Like for me, obviously, we're going to see Halo Wars two. I think we might see a quick bit of Halo five f- potential feature Halo five content. And then at the very, like maybe at the very end, drop just as a quick drop t- teaser, they'll either tease some spin-off game or they'll tease Halo on Xbox Scorpio, let's say, for the fuck of it. So I thought uh, you were literally going to say they're going to tease Halo Five, and we're going to end with that joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you can end with that joke if you want. Uh, yeah. Drew, but Drew, what's your what's your uh, Halo E3 lineup? The twist I'll put on that is. Halo Wars 2 is going to show gameplay, and that's going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, very good. Of course. Yes, thank you. And then they're going to unveil um, their eSports plan for Halo Wars 2, having a spectator mode and yeah, setting sure up. <laughs> I'm I prom- tried to avoid thinking about that. <laughs> I but... <laughs> promise you that's going to happen. It's going to be on It's going to be on Windows. Why wouldn't they make it into you know something a little more competitive? So, uh, yeah. so like Halo Wars Championship Series... <laughs> So HWCS. Um, I, I, I know. I honestly think there's going to be some kind of focus or push for Halo Wars 2 to have um, a hook to it that's more than, you know, hey, here's Halo Wars 2. It's just like Halo Wars, but now there's a two at the end. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's going to be some kind of microtransaction DLC thing uh, that they kind of unveil um, so that it lets people know that when you buy Halo Wars 2, you're going to be playing new content for the next year plus. Um, so then there will be if they wasted time on showing off the the last bit of content for Halo 5, I would honestly feel like that would be a step back for them, but at the same time I don't see how they couldn't mention it and show it off. So I think you might be right that they're going to It depends have... on the scale of how of Warzone Firefight, I think. And well, things I think going that, forward. I think at that point we get a uh, a montage, right? And that, that yeah. that's just a breakout video. Yeah, nothing about can... actually the future of Halo, just the montage. We're just going to get a montage. <laughs> right, even Rocky had a montage. No, um, <laughs> I think I think Halo 5 is going to have a content montage just flabbergast just unload thing that Ian's going to have a wonderful like six hour session trying to break down and, and point out every little thing and why it doesn't make any sense at all. And, yep, uh, yep. and then we're going to get, um, a teaser for the show and a teaser for halo six. And then I've been thinking about this. If, uh, if Scorpio is a thing, I wouldn't be surprised if potentially there is some sort of like, upgrade re-release thing or something for halo 5 just a like 20 dollar here you got everything if you don't have the game already here it is and it runs Please buy it 
Yeah, it runs better <laughs> or, or something like that. I don't yeah. know. Uh, but I was everything's think- actually sixty frames per second now. <laughs> yeah, I think forever. Um, yeah. Plus split screen. For some reason, I keep. Yeah, no. there you go. No, no, no split for screen. real. Never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. No, yeah. <laughs> if, if, you, if the hardware is that much more capable, hey man. Yeah, I, I would do it. I would. Buy, I would buy the shit out of that. I, but, I won't deny. So there you go. So Halo Five Split Screen Edition. <laughs> <laughs> that should be what it's called. <laughs> yeah, Split Screen Evolved. And then. <laughs> That, um, the thing that will make this E3 uh, Halo uh, experience perfect for me is if they say, and here is your mobile game that you can play, uh, <laughs> and it's available now. And it, and and it's better have, Wars 2 Tower Defense. <laughs> better have a fun play, because I'm going to be in Afghanistan for the next year, and I want to be able to play something on my tablet that is Halo-related. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I'm hoping for. Right. It'd be great well, if the twist... Is actually that Halo Wars 2 is a tower defense game. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, the joke about that shit. <laughs> right, my, my so. predictions. Um, a little uh, a little water down, perhaps. I think uh, Halo That's Wars right. 2 is obviously going to be the, uh, the mainstay of the show. But I think if we go by the structure of how they did uh, E3 following Halo, uh, Halo 4's release, where they showed us that brief glimpse of uh, Halo Xbox One back when it was that. A little sort of thematic, uh, cinematic piece to tease Halo 6. I think that's probably a thing that is likely to happen at this point. Um, Bearing in mind that uh, Halo 5 and Halo 4 sort of came out around the same time in terms of uh, distance from E3. There was about a month between them. So I think I think time-wise, it's it's possible, and I reckon we'll get some word on the TV show or something. Uh, I don't really think there's going to be an awful lot more than that, to be honest. I think it's going to be a Halo Light E3. <laughs> I think so. I think they're going to focus on like Gears of War and their other uh, franchises. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes Logan, sense. how about you? What's your idea? What's your E3 prediction lineup prediction? <laughs> mm, well. Got a pretty cool demo for Halo Wars 2, I guess. Um, the return of Poncho Chief for his teaser. <laughs> for Halo Poncho 6. Chief playing Ongoy Farmer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what the mobile game should be. <laughs> it's Ongoy Farmer. Actually, that's an entire easy presentation. There's no Halo Wars 2. There's no Halo 6. It's just Ongoy Farmer. There's there's Halo just Wars a guy Chief. cosplaying Poncho Chief just standing. <laughs> Standing on the on the <laughs> on the stage, looking at his phone, and like this, the giant screen behind him is like this vertical capture of his phone. And it looks all stupid. oh god. <laughs> <laughs> now we've wrapped it up. That's it. That's all I we think, need. Yeah, that's, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's all we need. Awesome. Well, so they, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion. Very much. Um, thank you, Mr. Drew Freeman, Horospis, and Logan for for joining me today. It's our pleasure. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thank Pleasure's you. all mine. <laughs> I love pleasing everyone. There you go. <laughs> and as I said at the start, uh, if you want to check these guys out, and please do check these guys out, There's there are relevant links in the in the description below. Drew Freeman, head of uh, Podcast Evolved, so Ooh. check them out. Horospis and Logan are both from the Halo Archive, which is a fantastic lore-based Heck community. Yeah. I've talked about it at the end of every video, probably <laughs> at the end of this one too. And of course... Horospis Blogs, which does fantastic... He's currently doing a fantastic breakdown of Halo 5. He's done fantastic a fantastic breakdown of all of Halo 4's content in the same vein. And he just... Uh, he does a lot of great Halo uh, Halo blogs. And some, and he does other blogs, too, which are all, always great. He's a fantastic wordsmith. Oh, thank I'm not you. I'll say it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I mean every word. <laughs> his, his next project is now that people have heard his voice, it's him narrating everything that he's written. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I, I'd like to do that. It's crossed my mind. Because I, I write I, I, the way that I, that I talk, so I think that it would fit quite well. It, it, it right. shows now that I've finally get, had, gotten to hear your voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, once again, thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And until next time, this has been... Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. 
It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.